Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got a rare bit of good news. We'll see a first in exoplanet science, and we'll hit the sun, earth, and geomagnetic field interactions and forcing. But we're starting as always with the last 24 hours on our star. Things haven't been crazy but haven't been quiet either. We're seeing a slow rise in solar flaring and at the same time seeing an increase in plasma filament destabilizations. Bottom left there is where you'll be looking. And while sunspot minimum is almost always quiet, these ups and downs in sunspot maximum are normal. And this is about the normal time for the recent calmer activity to cycle back up eyes on the sunspots and filaments expect generally increasing activity for the next four months. Spot of good news in seismicity. First day since November that no mid-magnitude events happened at Campi Flegri, Santorini, or the African Rift. Enjoy this one after the numbers they've put up the last 10 weeks. Up next, we're off to the first ever stratification study of an exoplanet atmosphere. They've been able to actually laser down into the different layers by watching stellar light pass just on the outer rim of the eclipsing planet, pretty incredible and the beginning of a new subfield in astronomy. Bit more serious and significant as the beachings continue. Yes, they've happened before they always have, and yes, we hear about them more quickly with social media and the internet today, but nobody questions that beaching events are on the rise, primarily in the creatures using magnetic navigation as well. It's because the poles are shifting. The next story plays there and in solar climate forcing. Zonal winds in the stratosphere and troposphere, those are the lowest parts of the atmosphere, have major connections to the 27-day solar rotation cycle. Let's go ahead and add that to previous studies on the sun and the wind, showing how those zonal winds, derechos, jet streams, and the average wind speed across the globe are tied to solar irradiance and geomagnetic activity. It's also something to consider as Earth's magnetic pole shift leads to more of that solar forcing. And the top story today, another example of them trying to do carbon climate science and winding up supporting solar significance. Their conclusions here are simple. Climate models are absolute garbage when it comes to the impact of losing ozone layer density. It's a critical factor in the equation and it has been ignored. Now they did this from the perspective of how carbon dioxide will impact the ozone, but it's well understood that solar storms are the biggest actors by factors of 10 to 100 on the ozone layer. So wait, if the tiny CO2 ozone impact is a critical piece missing from the models, one that dramatically impacts the outcomes, then the 10 to 100 times greater solar impact on ozone, which is also missing from climate models, would be exactly. And it's increasing every day, by the way, as the magnetic pole shift of Earth allows more of that solar forcing on the ozone. At Observer Ranch, there's a conference coming this weekend. Several events ongoing every single month. Check out the events page, the Observer Bot, our books and merchandise, and of course, book your reservation to come see us. It all starts at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.